Um, but we also included another article in the news this morning that is from a different source. And the title of the source is Gut Bacteria Don't Cause Autism. Autistic Kids' Microbiome Differences Are Due to Picky Eating. And that's from a publication called The Conversation. And there's everything under the sun in between. But even from the titles, you begin to see a little bit of what they found. We really encourage you to do your research and find and read because there's a lot of fine print in this. And I, 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 I think we're supposed to feel discouraged, Nancy. Yes. Um, that, that, the, that we're supposed to be like, oh, darn, the autism community said that they thought the microbiome had something to do with the cause of autism. And we're seeing that the, the end result is that they're saying that it appears that a limited diet is more responsible for the difference in the microbiome than the other way around. Right. Um, that it appears that a symptom of autism, which is that you might be a picky eater and not be eating, cer- eating certain things, could be what's causing the microbiome. I don't want anybody to get too discouraged about the result of this study. This is just more information. And the whole reason for doing research is to get more information. I don't, and they're looking at this through a very narrow lens. What I want to know now, and if they can get the funding to do it, I want them to go back now and study and go, okay, for the kids who have the picky diet, if we beef that diet up through behavioral intervention and get them to eat more things, and if we give them supplements, then what happens to the microbiome in their gut, right? And what happens to their symptoms of the the more challenging symptoms of being on the autism spectrum? Like, wouldn't that be interesting, Nancy? That would be very interesting. I'd like to see that study. Yeah. So I just want to say to everybody, as you're looking at this, because you know that by tomorrow at noon, there are going to be people who are going to say, well, the science is in and what you eat has nothing to do with autism. And what your gut does has nothing to do with autism. And that is not what this study says. No, and I was curious, what is microba? In the first article, it said they analyzed stool samples using microba's metagenome analysis. I believe that that's the name of the company. Okay. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. Um, That they are a company that has a particular expertise. um, Studying gut biome. Yes. So um, what I love, though, Nancy, is that there are so many different places that are looking at this in different ways. And CARD is part of research that is looking at this in a different way. CARD, the Center for Autism and Related Disorders. Um, And they've been looking specifically at the, and part of it is that it changed once they saw that um, there was a cluster that it was clear that changed how they were doing the study, but they're seeing that there is in, and I don't know whether it's a plus or a minus, but the clust, the clostridia, I hope I'm saying that right, is different. And when in the case, clostridia is a, is a gut biome, is a micro. I, I, that I couldn't tell you, Nancy. I wish I knew the answer to that. Um, we'll get somebody on back to talk about it. But I will say that in the next, right now, we we mentioned that there's a study going on uh, called the Gemma study, and this is part of what they're looking at here. So um, I, I, I we're going to be having them back on to talk about it. We can ask more questions. But I, I think to rule out that the gut and autism, that there is an interplay would be a ginormous mistake. And I don't think having read it, that that's what this suggests. Do you? No, I don't. Okay. I don't. So there we go. So don't anybody, you know, don't buy into this all or nothing kind of thing. It's sort of like the studies that were done around gluten-free, casein-free diets not making a difference. Yeah. Remember remember when that all came out and there was a lot of controversy um, about whether GFCF diets, there was a study that came out saying it didn't make a bit of difference. Yeah. Yeah. And then as you looked further into it, you saw that... um, that, you know, I don't, I don't know how many kids, let's say they had taken 12 kids and of the 12 kids, um, two of them, it, they saw no change whatsoever. And, and I'm, I'm making up statistics here, but this is the, the idea of it, that two of them saw no difference whatsoever and two made tremendous progress and everybody else was somewhere in between. And they said that the two wasn't significant. So 
Therefore, it doesn't. And I was like, but, 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 may, are you taking into consideration that there are different types of autism and there are different human beings? And for the two that it made a difference, why are you, you know, because then a parent reads and goes, oh, it makes no difference, but it might for their kid. So it's a very, it's what, part of the reason why we cover research on here because context is everything. Knowing what they studied and how they studied it, that's the interesting. Thanks for watching Autism Live. If you found anything helpful in this video, please give us a like. In fact, make sure that you smash that subscribe button on YouTube and give us a like on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram for important updates. And please download our free podcast wherever you get your podcasts. See you next time. Until then, give your kiddos a hug from me and one for you too. Bye-bye for now. To subscribe, click here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here.